This video is just a quick breakdown of a whoosh hit that I made and it sounds like this. And this is pretty much the whoosh hit that I used in my last video on how to design complex risers. It's just a slight variation of it. So the hit consists of five layers and the most important layers are the two on the top. So this is the body or the tail of the hit. And this is the punch layer. And without the effects on the group, the hit sounds like this. And the layers sound like this. The two main layers of this hit are actually pretty much synthesized completely because I've just used white noise to create these and maybe there is a kick layered in this one. But there is white noise on top. This one is purely white noise. And the uh, three layers on the bottom here are the suckbacks or the whooshes that lead into the hit. This one is barely audible. Probably doesn't really make a difference. The main one that's actually kind of giving the sound its character is this here. This is just a down-pitched sample without any real processing on it. So the original sounds like this. Pitched down 31 semitones. And it sounds like this. If you listen to the hit, this is the main thing that you hear. There is also this paper rip. Really low volume. Original sample is like this. Down-pitched all the way and stretched. So the processing on the group actually changes the sound quite a bit. So we're gonna go through all the effects that I used here. With the processing, it sounds like this. And without, it sounds like this. So the first two effects that I used are EQs. The only thing I did here really to change the sound is get rid of some mud. And I also boosted the highs and the lows a bit. So without this EQ, it sounds like this. And with. So with the second EQ, it kind of looks like I did the opposite of what I did with the first EQ. So I cut the lows and I boosted the mids. But this is because I actually applied this EQ after I used the reverb on the sound. And with the way the reverb changed the sound, these changes actually made sense. Kind of the big thing that changes the sound a lot is the reverb. So let's listen without the reverb again. Now with. So I used the Ableton Stock Reverb on this and I've actually created two chains. So this chain is empty, so it's just the original signal going through. And then I have another chain where I have the reverb at 100% wet. And I did this because I wanted to EQ the reverb, sort of to overcome some of the limitations that the Stock Ableton Reverb has. So this is just a reverb signal. And without the EQ. So with this EQ, I just wanted to get rid of the highs and boost a little bit more and both together. Now after this, I just have a utility plugin. Everything below 203 Hertz is in mono. At the end, I'm just pushing the sound into a limiter. Which glues everything together.